arriving at the Pima Air Museum. Oh my God, I haven't been here in years. We just arrived at the Pima Air Museum in Tucson. And this is the booster section of the space shuttle. Hello. Yeah, Data. Where are we, huh? <laughs> She's excited. She's excited. Let's see. Yeah, we go in there. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Well, look at that, Tita. Look at that. Well, this is a dog-friendly place, so I give it two thumbs up. Dogs are allowed in here. That's awesome. Wow, that's the tail section of a B-52. The business end, so to speak. Right here, we're inside one of the hangars. Come on, girl. Yeah, that's that little jet from the James Bond movie. They have so much more on display since the last time I was here. Wow. And here it is. The SR-71 Blackbird. What an impressive airplane this is. SR-71 Blackbird. Fastest plane in the world back then. This is the pilot who flew the SR-71 and he had to wear a pressure suit. This is a pretty big seaplane. It's really huge. The landing gear compared to Delta. Huh? Look at that. A Republic RF 84F Thunder Flash. It's from 1956. What airplane does that gun belong to? Of course, it's the famous A-10. So now we're entering the outside area with lots of airplanes. And it's 95 degrees. I just have to show that. They are really dog friendly here. They even got poop bags. That's awesome. The C. Stewart Mac McPherson hangar.
This is a B-24 Liberator bomber. I think they got a Monica sitting in there, I mean, lying. I wouldn't want to be in there. You have to be really small in order to fit in, in that turret. And they got the side gunners and the rear turret of the B-24. What an impressive machine. And this right here is a Russian Sturmovik from 1944. Those things were heavily armored with plates. And this was one of the first German World War II guided bombs. It had a range of three miles. It's called the Fritz X. It had 705 pounds of explosives. Right behind it is the V1 flying bomb. Anger 4. Oh wow. There's that wow effect right when you walk in. A B-29. A B-29. The sentimental journey. That's the nose wheel of the B-29. One of the gun turrets. And then the bomb bay. Oh, there's even one bomb in here. A Yokosuka Oka. That was a guided anti-ship bomb. Probably suicidal. It's Japanese. And right next to it is a Japanese fighter. This is a last ditch Japanese plane. 1945. No retractable landing gear, it would just be dropped after takeoff. Pilot wouldn't return anyhow. Yeah, this hangar is new to me. This is the nose of a B-25 Mitchell bomber. In the back, a Japanese Nakamichi Ayabusa fighter, World War II. The yellow helicopter is a Sikorsky, and then here the famous PBY Catalina. The famous Spitfire, British fighter, World War II. All the different uniforms of the time. Of course, this story is about Pearl Harbor and the USS Arizona. 
and down here is a piece of steel from the Arizona. Yeah, data. It's from the Arizona. A P40 in really excellent condition. This is a PB4Y bomber. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this bomber. Because this one even has side turrets. Never seen that before. Two on the side, one on the top, one in the front. And then here, one in the rear. It says Navy on it. Most fighters have little tailwheels. Like, like the Spit Fighter, the P40, or the Jack, you know, they don't have tailwheels. Well, we gave a bunch of these the to the Russians. The Aracobra. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they were great at low altitude, uh, give up 12,000 oh, feet, they started to lose performance. That's a good one. Uh, well, they drive jack, but they Home of the B-17 Flying Fortress. Oh yeah, looking forward for that one. Hello. How's it going? Now that we're in an air-conditioned room, <laughs> better. Yeah, it is hot today. Just for information, back by the tail of the plane, you see the doorway that says, uh, might say latrine, the ship safe restrooms. Okay. But on the left wall is a great problem. You'll see a doggy dish with water on the floor. Oh, all right. Okay, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. This is such a dog-friendly place here. I'm amazed. Right. It's really it's nice. Really I really love it. Thank you. And there she is. The B-17. The tail gunner section of the B-17. That's the position he would have been in. Here are the positions of the front gunner, pilot, top gunner, radio operator, and then two side gunners. And of course the bottom turret, the ball turret. You definitely don't want to be in there. Right, Delta? You would barely fit. Excellent museum. Well, it's not allowed to go in here. I just tried to point the camera around. It's too dark, unfortunately. But that's how you would enter the aircraft. It's very, very small. A super constellation from TWA. And then they got a couple of Air Force Ones here from back in the days. I believe that this one right there, that used to be John F. Kennedy's Air Force One.
His first plane is actually not an Air Force One, it's a Freedom One, it's a transport plane. Never heard of that designation before. Well, never too old to learn. This could be a B-36 bomber from the 50s. They used to fly out of El Paso back in the days. If I'm not mistaken, one crashed into the Franklin Mountains in El Paso. There's still some wreckage up there. And then right next to it, there are a couple of B-52s. And that's the second B-52. Massive engines, eight of them. Oh, this is the museum store. Pretty nice. Yeah, we just finished the Pima Museum, which I can highly recommend because they have plenty of parking for RVs. So even if you drive by, you can always stop here and look around at the airplanes. If you have a dog, bring your dog. They're very friendly. Leaving Pima Museum, it was well worth it. Absolutely highly recommended if you are into this kind of stuff. And there's so much to see that I didn't even do. Uh, I see tanks there now. We didn't go there, but hey, you cannot do it all. There are some tanks 